guys, it's Chris again with Nelson Emergency Training. Um, going to do a review of a few supplies here from my friends at Rescue Essentials. Thought about doing them as several reviews, uh, and I may do individual reviews in depth of products or training videos with individual products later on, but just to show you some of the things that are available from Rescue Essentials and how they function and so forth. First product I've got is a cat tourniquet. Anybody familiar with military, law enforcement, um, anything like that nature, you probably already know very well what a cat tourniquet is. Uh, EMS, you probably do as well, maybe even fire. But the CAT stands for Combat Application Tourniquet, C-A-T. And it's, you can see this here. You can leave it, it's a Velcro strap with a pull tab like this. And different versions, um, as they've updated over time, they've made a few minor changes here and there. And different versions function a little bit differently, but the basic principle is the same. It's the basic principle off the old classic handmade tourniquet of you find a piece of bandage, a bandana, whatever you can find and you wrap it around the wound, tie it, or above the wound, sorry, tie it, insert some sort of rod and twist with a windlass. It is a windlass style tourniquet. Uh, but anyway, the way the cat works is you slide it high and tight above the wound. You want to do that because the upper arm and upper leg have uh, one bone as opposed to two in the lower arms and lower legs and there's much more of a chance of actually occluding a bleeding blood vessel against that one single bone. It's designed for rapid application. You can take it completely apart. There's a buckle here that just slides through. You don't have to. It's up to you. But I'm going to just to demonstrate purposes here. So you can take it completely apart. And on this version there was two there is a version that only has one, but in this case you do want to use two. It will hold a little more securely. And you can either fasten it around and run it through, or you can do it partially and slide it on. For self-application it's probably easier that way. Uh, it's a wonderful tourniquet for self-application, which is why it gets used a lot in military and law enforcement. Anyway, you would pull this tight and you would twist the windlass rod here like so All right, until the blood flow stops so you don't have a pulse it's going to be very painful it's just the nature of the beast with a tourniquet if it's not painful it's probably not tight enough and not going to work but anyway once you've twisted this probably three times if you've pulled it tight enough beforehand the windlass, the rod, tucks in. Let's see if you can see this. There's a little clip here. It tucks into this little clip and it holds it into place. And then there's a Velcro strap to assure that it stays in place. And you can document the time on here with a Sharpie or uh, some kind of pen or something that will write on that. I keep a Sharpie with mine in my medical bag. So that's the cat tourniquet. The cat is one of the... Uh, few that are actually part of the TCCC as far as the professional stuff for the military, law enforcement, things like that, that are recommended. Excellent courses, if you can get those courses, definitely recommend taking them. Uh, basic first aid class will show you how to use a commercial tourniquet, and the one illustrated is usually a windless type, much like the cat. Often it is a cat that's used in the illustration, it just doesn't list it by name. So... That's the cat tourniquet. That's one product. Another product is the SAM splint. Rescue Essentials carries it. It's a flexible aluminum type wire splint that can be folded into a kind of a curve. It can actually be folded into several different kinds of curves. Just for an example, we'll show you how you would, how you would fold one for a lower leg.
see how I'm folding it like this? As I fold it like this, it becomes far more rigid, excuse me, rigid than if it's not. See, when it's not folded, it's very flexible. But just that bend makes it a lot harder to move and a lot more flexible, or a lot less flexible and a lot more rigid. And you would put a foot inside this like a stirrup. And let's say the brake is here. You would tape it above and below. So that's basically how that works. That's a basic introduction to the SAM splint. If you're going to have a first aid kit at all, uh, broken bones are a very common um, occurrence in just normal everyday life, especially if you have children even, or athletics, things like that. SAM splints are not a great deal of expense to them, uh, but Rescue Essential does carry the SAM splint. There are other manufacturers that make similar splints, but uh, SAM has been around. It's radiolucent. It means at the hospital they won't have to necessarily take off the splint to be able to x-ray. They will be able to x-ray through it. It's padded, so the you know it's not like you have metal pushing against the skin. The blue side would go against the skin. So that's the SAM splint. And there's a lot more that you can do for a SAM splint. Just about anything that needs to be splinted with the proper size SAM splint can be splinted. So that's that product. The next product we have is the 4-inch emergency trauma dressing. We'll pull this out. It's, a, it's an excellent pressure dressing. These are ones that I use for training. That's why they're open. But you will see there's a pad that is sewn in here. It will go over a wound. And then you have this elastic bandage, roller bandage type for the rest of the dressing, which you can pull. It's like an ace wrap and apply pressure with over that wound. When you get done, of course I'm just going to hastily wrap it around just for illustration purposes in the video. But there's a clip to secure it in place at the top and bottom of the bandage or one of the wraps around it. So that is the trauma bandage. It's very similar to the Israeli bandage, which they also have at Rescue Essentials. And it's the gold standard of pressure dressings. I will probably one day do a pressure dressing training video. But as far as any training video goes, uh, the best training to get is hands-on training where you have a certification. Because if you do perform first aid on somebody, very, very seldom has anybody ever been sued for performing first aid, especially if doing it properly. But it does help in your defense to show, yes, I was trained properly, I was certified, so forth. Not to mention, it's a lot easier to learn hands-on and acquire a skill. And most of first aid is a skill and knowledge base. It's both. It's a knowledge base and a skill. And skills are best obtained through hands-on practice and repeated use and best maintained that way. Another similar dressing is the cinch tight. And all of these dressings, they have similar packaging. And the directions are on the back or on the front. Somewhere on the package is the direction. The cinch tight has an 8x10 abdominal pad in it. This one is a Velcro hold. As you can see. And here's that 8x10 abdominal pad. So it's excellent for larger wounds on arms and legs or in the abdominal area. There is a little S-hook like hook on here. Just use my arm here again for illustration purposes. That as you wrap around, so you have the Velcro here on the end, it will hold your first wrap in place. And then you can come with this S hook 
and go like this and pull over the top of the wound and apply more pressure. Kind of a pressure bar, much like the one in the Israeli dressing. Um, I may get one of those one day as well and show you an Israeli dressing. I don't have one in my pile right here with me at the moment, but... And it's Velcroed here, so that you can Velcro it in place and apply pressure. Tourniquets and pressure dressings are our friend anytime there is major arterial bleeding or uh, major bleeding of any kind, but usually arterial, especially from the tourniquet end. So that is the cinch tight. And then we have the Olace Modular, and it comes in several sizes. This is the 4 inch. And it's all of these, you will see, have a common theme of this pressure dressing in them. The beautiful part about the O-Lace is as you go along, in segments it is Velcroed so that you're not dropping it on the ground. It makes it very easy for application. I love that. I, I wish all of these were manufactured that way. The O-Lace comes with this paper wrapping inside. Now in the O-Lace, you will see that there is also a piece of plastic. And of course, this is all packaged as a sterile dressing. This can be taped on the sides, used as an occlusive dressing for a sucking chest wound. And we'll, maybe we'll do a video on that at some point. If not, look into that. Look into a first aid class, and that may or may not be covered in a standard first aid class. Look into a quality, advanced first aid class or an EMT type class or something like that. Now you'll see here there's the pad, and there's this absorbent stuff inside. Now a lot of different uses for this. You can leave it inside as is to apply more pressure and be absorbent. If it's a wound that's in an area that, say the shoulder or say a groin area, that needs to be packed, and a class that we offer is our bleeding control for the injured class or stop the bleed classes. They are uh, geared toward hemorrhagic incidents and lots of bleeding. Uh, they're the basis of any trauma course actually. It talks about the principle of packing a wound. Let's just say for the sake of training that this hand, my hand, is a wound here. You can take the end of this and start shoving this end to that wound and keep packing and packing and packing and packing and packing until you run out or you fill it up and you just cannot get any more in and then you can put it on top and press and then you can press like this and then wrap as you have with the other uh, dressings so that's something different in the O-Lace that's different from the other pressure dressings that I like it's wonderful for uh, those wounds where you have to do wound packing and that's a valuable skill I should um, encourage you to learn there's also a cup like an eye cup um, in the O-Lace, and that is actually what it is for. It is to go over an eye. Makes a wonderful dressing for head wounds as well. So, that's a basic rundown on the O-Lace. And these are just, like I say, product introduction videos more than an actual serious review of each product, and that may be in the near future for these products. Um, but my friends here at uh, Rescue Essentials, wonderful bunch of people to work with high quality products always um, very good about shipping and it's a it's just a good product good company to get stuff from and they sell their own products as well as some other products um, that are useful and beneficial you won't find uh, useless cheap junk here you will find adequate supplies for when you need them the most So that's the, again, the O-Lace Modular Bandage. And then one more product here, the H&H &H Flat Folded. And this one isn't flat folded. I've took it out and used it, but it does come in a flat fold package for space. It, like the uh, O-Lace, is somewhat Velcro. I don't think it all is, but that one spot. And then there's one here. 
at the other end. The way the H bandage works, you have another like 8x10 pad. And I think it comes in a couple of sizes. And it's more of like for an abdominal wound or an arm or leg wound, upper arm, upper leg wound. Anyway, you will take it and you'll take your first wrap around. Again, it's like the others and has a piece of Velcro to help hold it in place. And then you will go around one side of the H, come around the other side of the H bar, like this. I see it creates a bar there to push against, and then go this way against that bar. And that provides a pressure applicator, much like the applicator in the Israeli bandage. See, they're all on the basic principle being of pressure dressings of applying pressure to the wound. And I know these are poorly wrapped. This is not for saying this is the best way to wrap. It's just to show you how you would go around like that. And then there's another clasp, much like the others, where you clip at the top and the bottom of one of the wraps of the bandage. So that is the H bandage. It comes in flat fold. Any of these that come in a flat fold, they're beautiful uh, because they take they take up a lot less space in the kit and they're much easier to pack than these that come wrapped in round packaging or square thick packaging like this. So that's a review of some of the products from uh, H&H. &H. Well, H&H &H makes some of them in Olace, but some of the products from Rescue Essentials. Check them out. And thanks for watching, and see you the next time. Have a good day. Stay safe and be prepared.